Hi, and welcome to another edition of Your Health with Dr. Christy. My name is Dr. Christy Reisinger, and today we're going to discuss whether the coronavirus is mutating. We all know the name of the novel coronavirus is SARS-CoV-2. This is the virus that causes COVID-19. SARS-CoV-2 is an RNA virus. RNA viruses, by just the way that they are designed, mutate. It's the way they survive. RNA viruses can mutate rapidly and can mutate frequently. These mutations are common, but just because these mutations are happening does not mean necessarily that a virus will become more virulent or more dangerous. We just simply don't know what's going to happen with SARS-CoV-2. We're hopeful that the mutations that we're seeing with SARS-CoV-2 will be more like measles than it is with influenza, but we just don't know yet. As we continue to gather information, we'll know more, but I think probably what will happen is the virus will land somewhere in between what we see with measles and somewhere in between what we see with influenza. Measles is a very stable virus. Even though there are mutations that happen, it doesn't affect the vaccine. The same vaccine that was designed so many years ago is still effective. We haven't needed to change measles vaccines from one year to the next. Then on the other end of the spectrum, we see influenza. Influenza is able to mutate and change in the areas that affect the vaccine. This is why we need a new influenza vaccine every season. As I mentioned before, most likely the SARS-CoV-2 will land somewhere in between. Some pressure for a virus to mutate is caused by the immunity of the host. And right now there's not a lot of pressure on SARS-CoV-2 to mutate because the host, us, don't have immunity at all. We've never seen this virus before. I'm hopeful that means that the pressure for the virus to change will be lessened, especially during this period of time. All the different mutations that we've observed are all variations to the original Wuhan virus that originated in China. I think something that is important to do is to link the mutations with the clinical outcomes of the patients that the various isolates were taken from. That means that some mutations might correlate with different SARS-CoV mortality rates, but we're just not sure yet. We're just not sure that as these mutations happen, if the SARS-CoV virus becomes more dangerous. As I mentioned before, the hope is as these mutations continue, they would be minor enough to not affect a vaccine that's developed so that one vaccine will be effective, at least for a period of time. One prediction by a scientist named Trevor Bedford at the Fred Hutchinson Cancer Center is that the mutation on the spike protein is the one that'll, that will affect the vaccine. And these changes to the spike protein will likely take years rather than months to occur. I hope that's true. We just don't know without doing experiments if one viral variant behaves differently than another especially at this point when there's only a small handful of genetic changes between them. That will continue to change as more mutations happen. So as I said, I wish I could give everyone a clear definitive answer for how long a vaccine will last and if these mutations are going to cause the SARS-CoV-2 to become more dangerous. We just don't know yet. My hope is that that is not the case, but we just have to wait and see. Thanks again for joining me.